A lot of times as a football coach, you can hear the helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. It's just a big crack. In a sport that reveres the tough. Even the toughest lay at the mercy of their minds. You have a good indication of, hey, that's, this kid's getting up a little woozy. Wow, he got through. As a high school football coach in the Bronx, John Appleby sees it constantly. The contact and many times ensuing concussions. But despite our country's unprecedented focus to stop them, the hits and this specific injury keep coming. So compared to where we were 10 years ago, we're, we're much better, but we are still very, very far away from completely understanding concussion and on multiple levels. To understand what Dr. Dennis Cardone is referring to, we need a quick history. In the early and mid-2000s, concussions started making real noise across the U.S. when three former NFL players took their own lives. Doctors diagnosed them with CTE, a degenerative brain disease caused by repeated head trauma. It was the first time it had happened in the NFL, so states started passing what are known as return to play laws to protect kids in all sports. They set concussion education requirements and procedures for coaches and players. Washington state became the first state to pass this such law in 2009, and by 2015, all 50 states in Washington, D.C. had them in effect. It was a big moment. Awareness was quickly increasing and people felt like progress was being made until a 2020 study from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons came out showing the progress wasn't quite where many had hoped it would be. This is an MRI of the brain. You see these small areas that are black. Um, these are all small areas of microhemorrhage. Dr. Yvonne Louie is the director of radiology at NYU's Langone Health one of the institutions leading the way in concussion research. That 2020 study we referred to showed between 2010 and 2017, concussions made up nearly a quarter of all high school injuries. But what surprised researchers the most are the sports they occurred in. In boys football, concussions comprised 25.2% of injuries, but in girls soccer, they were higher at 29.8%. And from 2014 to 2017, the rate at which they were occurring increased in six of the nine high school sports sampled, including football, soccer, volleyball, basketball, and baseball. So we show that there are differences between the brains of contact sport athletes and non-contact sport athletes. Omari, let's go. Chris, let's go. Some states are bolstering their requirements. In the huddle, in the huddle. Yep. For instance, John's home state of New York is currently considering a bill that would require all athletic trainers get licensed and not just certified. If it passes, it would make New York the 48th state in the country with such a requirement. In other places, leagues have put bans on things like heading in soccer or checking in hockey until players are at least 13. Uh, eyes up. Yeah. But coaches, doctors, and even players know it's a tough issue to solve in sports that herald such a quality. In the Bronx, I'm Dan Grossman. When it comes to football, one group of researchers is hoping their study will raise awareness about who is most at risk for a concussion on the field. They measured biomarkers for traumatic brain injury in 52 college players pre and post season. Those are proteins and other substances that can be found in the blood after the brain is damaged. High speed players who build up momentum before a tackle had higher levels of TBI biomarkers. Positions like quarterback, wide receiver, defensive back and running back. This was compared to non-speed positions like offensive and defensive linemen who usually make a tackle before gaining too much speed. I think this is probably an, another layer that we're examining that hasn't been examined before. So they've looked at mechanical impacts before, um, you know, they've looked at concussion before. Her team also found increases in TBI biomarkers for players overall at the end of the season. This was regardless of a concussion diagnosis. That indicates any type of impact during a football game can create spillage of proteins from the brain. Will it lead to, you know, rule game changes? Will it lead to better helmets, better equipment? Uh, will it change uh, anything in terms of, you know, how the players will play the game? I don't know. Uh, but it is a nice tool to have in order to be able to make decisions going forward. And, you know, we'll leave it up to the experts who, who create the rules and, and, and do the coaching. If you're a parent of a young player, she says the best thing to do is be informed about how the team plans to monitor concussions. 
On your screen, you can see some of the most common symptoms listed by the Cleveland Clinic.